Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 6-2 for the Forrester textbook. We are talking today and this whole chapter about non-right triangles. We are going to now take everything that we've learned about trig and see what we can do with any old triangle, not just right triangles. You can recall that everything we did about sine and cosine and tangent and cosecant and all these guys had to be done on a right triangle, but now anything goes. So before we begin, I have a question for you. Why is the triangle this central shape? Why is it this big deal? Why are we studying triangles? Is there a better shape that we could study? Is there something else that we should be studying instead? Let's talk about it in class. I'll get back to you with that. One thing I can say about triangles that is in their favor is their simplicity. So if you need to make a 3D model of something in the computer, the just wham, bam, get her done way to do it is to just string together triangles. Because as soon as you have three points, you've got a triangle that defines a plane, the computer knows how to bounce light off of a flat surface, a plane like that. And you can see here we've got a bunny uh, made out of planes, made out of triangles, made out of three points at a time. And you really get a lot of bang for your buck with this because you've got triangle one defined and then as soon as you get one more point, you've got another triangle. And it really quickly grows and is easy for the computer to chew on. So this may not look like much here, but you just add more computing power, add more triangles, add more triangles, and you've got something that's pretty bunny looking real quick. Now, you can see there the progression, but rather than wasting most of their time always doing everything perfectly, what computer programmers actually do is they vary the number of triangles based off of how sharply things are changing, how quickly uh, things are changing, how sharp the angles are. So this would be a pretty realistic way here that you could see how Pixar or DreamWorks might make a computer bunny. So today we need to brush up on some of our geometry labels. There's some terms that we used freshman year that you have maybe forgotten. Uh, we need to brush up on our trig. What do sine and cosine do? We'll use the Pythagorean formula and that will help us build our first non-right triangle building block, the law of cosines. And then we'll have two examples that you need to bring to class. So you got to remember some basic stuff from geometry. In geometry, when we've got a non-right triangle, we just throw stuff out there and we use capital letters for the three points and then also for the angles. So you could say that that's angle A right there. You could also say that it's angle BAC, but most of the time it's easier just to call it angle A. And then opposite angle A is side A, but that's lowercase. And then opposite angle B is lowercase b and c, so on. So we need to be able to talk about these different kinds of triangles that we're encountering. Are they right triangles, which means one of the angles is 90. Are they a acute, is it an acute triangle, meaning all the angles are less than 90? Or is it an obtuse triangle where one of the angles is greater than 90? So that's kind of talking about the angles. Is one of them 90? It's a special case. Are all of them small? That's pretty straightforward. Is one of them huge? Well, then the other two are small, but that's a, that's a special case sometimes as well. Then we start talking about the sides, and we've got words like isosceles, which comes from the Greek meaning to be equal, so two of the sides are equal. Uh, scalene, which means you've got to just measure each and every one. They're all different. So the scale, you know, you have to put something on the scale to see how much it weighs. You have to put each of the three sides on the scale. Nobody's the same as anybody else. They all weigh something different. And equilateral. So this is all the sides have the same length. And those are very, very straightforward. All the sides are the same. All the angles are 60. Very nice. So those are the three terms about angles, the three terms about sides, and then there's also like what do you know? You probably don't know everything about this triangle. You probably are only given some information. So if you're given side angle side, then we usually just abbreviate that SAS, and notice the order matters, that putting that A in between the two S's means that the angle there has to be in between the two sides. So if this triangle right here, if I gave you sides A and sides 
C, then, and I gave you in the middle between those is angle B, that would be SAS. I could also give you SSS, very straightforward, that's all three sides, none of the angles. I could give you side, side, angle. Now this is not the same as side, angle, side. This means I've given you two sides next to each other and then a third angle not in between them. So like if I gave you side A and side C and then either angle A or angle C on this triangle, then you would be getting side, side, angle. Lastly, I suppose somebody might try to pull one over on you and give you angle, 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 but what's the problem with that? What could go wrong with knowing all three angles and none of the sides? There's an infinite number of possibilities that if you have the same triangle and then you blow it up and you shrink it down, that that same triangle with those same three angles, there's an infinite number of ways that you could do that. So. That's not really helpful. I mean, you could talk about the ratio of the three sides, but you couldn't talk about their definite must be values because there's an infinite number. All right, so that was a review of geometry. Let's remember the unit circle here, basic, basic trig, sine and cosine. What are sine and cosine? How did we define those? Yes, there's SOHCAHTOA, but more helpfully, there's defining them on a circle, on a circle of radius one, where x, is the uh, amount of right displacement, and that's cosine, and y is the amount of upward displacement, and that is sine of the angle, and we like to use the Greek letter theta, and we're assuming that the radius on this circle is one to make the math easier. Lastly, for refreshers, there is Pythagoras. He said that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. There's a lot of cool proofs for that. If you get curious, you should definitely look those up. Those are fun to know. and in mind stretching to know how this fundamental thing that so much we do is based off of why does it work I could show you some sometime all right so now we have the pieces that we need to be able to build the law of cosine so we're gonna have to think about this we're gonna try to talk about sine and cosine on a non right triangle we're gonna have a triangle that's not got any 90 degree and we're still gonna need to build this and we're gonna use it on side 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 um, to find one angle or on side angle side to find the missing third side, okay? So look at this triangle over here, ABC, and none of the angles are 90. We don't know what any of the, uh, uh, the, the sides are here. Wait, depending upon what we're given, we need to be able to think about what this could be for anything, with any angles, with any sides, what could be going on here. So. When we start to try to do trig on a non-right triangle, some weird problems arise. We don't have a place to be able to look out and say, what is sine C? What is cos C? What is sine A? What is cos A? So if we wanted to try to do sine of C, what would be the problem? Well, we'd be looking out from C and we would wish that there was an altitude dropping down from B. We wish, if you look at this triangle, you wish there was something that would drop straight down from point B and intersect the line AC at a right angle, which is, in geometry, got a fancy name, it's called altitude. So we would need that to be able to calculate what is sine C. We, we would also need that same cut made into AC to be able to do cos. That adjacent piece right next to angle C is some fraction of AC to be able to then say that over side A, that uh, hypotenuse of this imaginary triangle. Can you see where this right triangle would have to be for us to be able to speak meaningfully about sine C or cos C? So that's exactly what we're gonna do, is we're gonna just go ahead and drop point D there in the middle of AC, and that will allow us to have a right triangle over there. That now triangle BCD is a right triangle because BDC is a right angle. So now we can use our sine and cosine. This is a problem though, because in real life, if you're given a triangle ABC, you don't know D, you don't have time to find it, you're not trying to add more searches for yourself to make more work. We're hoping that there's some process that we can come up with that doesn't actually require us to find D, that we're, we're creating D and then we hope to kill it. We hope to get rid of it out of our equation later. And 
unfortunately it does go away. So now, what is cos C in this case? Cos C is going to be adjacent, so that's CD over A. And what about sine C? Well, that's opposite over hypotenuse, so that's BD over A. So now we can start to say, hmm, what would CD alone be? CD alone would have to be, move that equation around. You can write this in your notes if you need to write it down. It would be A cos C. What would BD be equal to? Well, that would, we just said that that, uh, that, co that sine C is equal to BD over A. So A equals A sine C. And then AD over there is just going to be the, what's left on the bottom. So that whole bottom piece, what you could call side AC, capital A, capital C, is also equal to lowercase b, that the whole bottom piece of our triangle here is b long. And if we subtract CD from it, then that's what AD. So AD equals lowercase b minus capital CD. And then we just found what CD was equal to. So now I hope you can see how we can string this all together that we can find side C using Pythagoras. We have an equation for BD. We have an equation for AD in terms of CD. And then those two sides squared have to equal side C squared. Okay, so this is getting huge. This is making a big equation that's gonna be nasty, but I promise you it will clean up. Okay, so stick with me, press pause, get caught up there, make sure you've got equations for each of those. Let's put it all together now, Pythagoras style. So here's the things that I was just saying in the air. We said how to find those three lengths uh, based off of all the definitions with sine and cosine. And now, track with me one line at a time, c squared equals the other two legs of the right triangle, each squared being added. So a sine c quantity squared is just a squared sine squared c. That's not too bad. Where you have to remember your how to do quadratic stuff from last year is if we have b minus a cos c quantity squared, we get the first one squared minus two times them times each other plus the last one squared. So it's here on the screen you can see that that's b squared minus ab cos c plus a squared cos squared c. So this is getting large and messy and nasty, and we gotta start looking for some way to clean this up. We want this to not be this nasty, otherwise this isn't a useful equation. This is just gross. So you should be on the lookout for always, always, if you ever see a sine squared of an angle plus a cos squared of an angle, that can always just be one. That's that Pythagorean identity that we learned first, the first trig identity we learned this year. And lo and behold, we do see that. We have it first and last in this long equation here on the second line of this proof. And, but they both have an a squared in them. So you factor out the a squared and you're still left with sine squared c plus cos squared c. And the other two terms are unaffected. You still have b squared and you still have minus two ab cos c. This then cleans up. Sine squared c plus cos squared c is equal to one, and you get c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus two ab cos c. Now, the reason I paused all dramatically there was because this should be sounding very, very familiar to you, except for the last part. The familiar thing is this is Pythagoras. This is the Pythagorean identity. c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab, there's a little bit more. Pythagoras, you remember from just a minute ago, we just said it in this lecture, is requires that you be on a right triangle. Now we've added a little bit of more to the equation, so it works on any triangle. It works on anything that is uh, not necessarily right uh, 90 degrees. This minus 2ab cos c lets you handle any other angle there at uh, angle c. It doesn't have to be 90. What happens if it is 90? Well, what is cosine of 90? 
zero. Cosine of 90 is zero, so that minus 2ab cos c, that term goes away. It's zero, so then you really do get Pythagoras. This is just Pythagoras expanded and made more useful and applying to more triangles. I think that's pretty cool. So, some people like to get all bent out of shape and memorize the law of cosines that we just made in three different versions. All of you who have uh, super compulsive and are, uh, and are overly note-taking, here's all three versions. But this is not the best way to understand this. It would be better if you thought about this and said, look, this works off of SAS. If I've got a side and the angle in between and another side, then those are the pieces uh, that I'm working with. And if I do this side squared plus this side squared minus two times this times this times cos of the angle in between, that gets me the other side squared. SAS, do the formula, and that gets you the third side squared. So this is a important principle to understand, more important than just memorizing formulas. So what I would like for you to do is these two different pieces here. Uh, case one is what I just, just described, where you're going to have 52 squared plus 16 squared minus 2 times 52 times 16 times cos 115 will equal this third side squared. So you can just set it up that way. This is SAS looking for the other side. Case two on the screen is where I've given you all three sides and it's the cosine of the angle that you don't know. So you've got to set it up so that 32 squared uh, plus 24 squared minus two times 32 times 24 times cos of theta, what we're looking for, cos of question mark equals 37 squared. So to get out of that at the end, once you juggle all the numbers around, we'll have to get to do an arc cosine to be able to find that angle over there, okay? So you've got two things that you need to uh, bring in your notes, and I hope you took notes throughout all of this. If not, watch it again and take notes here. We'll be checking at the end of the chapter. But the most important piece to bring in for the daily check is, did you do these two triangles here? So we'll be talking about triangles. We'll be talking about the usefulness of this versus Pythagoras, and I will see you in class.